Hi, I'm Annie Wallace. Hi, I'm Brian Michael. Hi, I'm Luke Anderson. Hi everyone, Blossom C. Brown here. I'm Jinx Monsoon. And welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. And welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. And welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. And this is the Sarah O'Connell Show. And welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. <laughs> welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. This week is the Transgender Day of Visibility which I'm very proud to support in my role as Sally on Hollyoaks. Now this week, Sally is walking down the aisle with her childhood sweetheart, Myra. Uh, Now whether or not that wedding will take place as it should, you'll just have to wait and see. But visibility to me is simply a matter of being out there, acknowledging to the world, here I am, I'm doing my job the best I can uh, in the public eye And I suppose there's a bit of a burden on that because I have to behave myself a lot. But having said that, there's trans actors, politicians, journalists, models, bakers, butchers, plumbers, airline pilots. (laughs) And um, we're all working towards one goal, and that's the destigmatisation for trans and non-binary people. If visibility means that the younger generation coming after us have an easier time in their lives, then that makes everything that we do worthwhile. We're also having fun doing it, by the way, so it's not exactly a burden. Thanks. I'm Brian Michael Smith. I'm an actor and an advocate for better representation for LGBT, especially trans characters, in TV and film. I've appeared on a couple TV shows you may have seen. I've been on Blue Bloods. I have a recurring role on Queen Sugar. I'm most known for that role because I'm an out trans actor playing an out trans character on a cable show. I'm playing Twine Wilkins, who's a police officer on the Ava DuVernay executive produced TV show that airs on OWN. And I'm speaking today because it's Transgender Day of Visibility. Today is Trans Day of Visibility. Today is a celebration of being visible in the trans community. And what that means to me is being able to take ownership of your identity and your experience and to celebrate it. We had Transgender Day of Remembrance where we remember the people that we've lost due to discrimination and the and victimization that we as trans people tend to face, but today was set aside to celebrate us. Visibility means standing in your own power. It means seeing that you are not alone and showing other people what you have in common through this experience while celebrating what makes us unique within this community. I think visibility is important and I chose to be more visible because I want other young trans people to know that they are not alone and that things do get better. That if you advocate for yourself, if you believe in yourself and you surround yourself by people who will support you, even when the people who you know care about you don't, you can be who you want to be. You can be who you truly are, and you can reach the dreams that you have. I never thought it would be possible to be an out trans actor until I saw other out trans actors, and I want to be able to do the same thing for other people, for other people who are artists, for other people who aren't even in the arts but want to be able to live their lives. Today, celebrating trans visibility of 2019 is a big deal to me. Um, I'm not sure if many of you know, but I went on Big Brother in 2012 as uh, a trans person in stealth mode, um, afraid to be me every day. Uh, And then I took the decision to go on national TV and come out as a trans person. And I don't look back, Uh, I'd do it again and again and again, because at the end of the day, it means I get to be the real me every day without having to lie and to literally be proud of the person who I am. And uh, that's it really. Um, I hope this video is helpful and Trans Visibility 2019 is, you know, the one where maybe you decide to be the real you out loud with no shame because it's not shameful at all. Cheers guys, bye. Most of you may remember me from season one of Caitlyn Jenner's show, I Am Kate, and also from my appearance in season 13 of Ellen. But today I wanna talk to you about Trans Day of Visibility and what it means to me. For me, Trans Day of Visibility means action. It's about trans people taking action to let people know that we are still here, we're still thriving, and we're still surviving. Now, we're living in a world today where trans people are threatened, trans people are almost erased because of this administration. 
But the great thing is, we're a strong, resilient community. Trans Day of Visibility means coming forward, showing how proud you are, living in your truth, not being worried what anyone else has to say, and really, really being you. Fighting the good fight, fighting for our rights. We deserve to have the same rights as everyone else. We deserve to live a normal, healthy life. We deserve health care. We deserve to get employment. We deserve housing. We deserve it all. And Trans Day of Visibility helps with that. And I'm here to fight the good fight, and I know you are too. So that's what Trans Day of Visibility means to me. On the 31st of March is Trans Day of Visibility. What does being visible mean to you? I think it's um, living your life unapologetically as a trans person. I think it's just doing what you would do any any given day, you know, just being a human being and living your life, but unapologetically. And um, that's easier said than done because for many people, safety is an issue. Um, many people live in regions where they don't necessarily get to be out and proud in the way that they would like, but that's why it's important that we continue to do things like visibility and awareness. Um, that's why we need advocates and people to continue stepping up and claiming our space um, so that the people who live in regions where it's not as safe for them to be out and proud, um, maybe we can change that and we can continue to affect and affect change for those less accepting regions. You know, I mean, I spend most of my time in places where I can dress how I want, present how I want, walk down the street and be okay. That doesn't mean that I don't still face prejudice every day. Uh, I still face, you know, comments and jeers and, and looks, you know. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm at a point where it's like, I, <laughs> I'm dressed for battle every day I leave my house because when I see those things, it's really hard for me to just like move on with my day. I oftentimes say something about it or give a look back or um, walk even flouncier down the street, you know. Um, but I also am always saying to people when they ask me, like, what do I do if I live somewhere where I, I don't feel safe walking down the street dressed and presenting the way that I know is my truth. And I always say, you have to put your safety first. There's no reason why we should lose any more trans lives because of other people's ignorance and prejudice. I always say, put your safety first until you're able to get to um, a city or a place or a safe space um, where you are able to embrace yourself and embrace your truth like that. And it's about building your tribe, um, finding your chosen family, and finding the city or the locale that works for you. And for me, I've only ever felt at home in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. I recently, well, um, now I'm just on the West Coast because I recently moved to San Francisco and I feel very at home there. Um, and that's not the Pacific Northwest, but it's still, you know, it's still yeah. the West Coast. But um, I grew up in Portland, Oregon. Then I moved to Seattle. Now I live in um, uh, San Francisco. Those three cities are all kind of like sister cities. <laughs> um, so... I know for myself, that's where I have to live to be happy. Yeah. And I think it's just about all of us finding that for ourselves, finding our tribes and our chosen family, putting our safety first, but getting to a place where you are able to walk through your day confidently and securely and, and living your truth. <laughs> Very good advice. Well, I just, you know, I mean, my heart breaks anytime I hear about someone taking their own life or someone's life being taken because they're living somewhere where ignorance is still <laughs> commonplace, you know? And at this point in time, like I said, you are either for progress or you're against it. Yeah. There's no towing the line. There's no fence riding right now. The world is divided between people who want to take a step backwards and people who want to take a step forward. Because it's not even about keeping things the same now. Yeah. Because the people who, the conservative people who are upset with the progress that the queer community and the trans community has made, 
they don't want to just stop things where they are. They want to move backwards. Yeah. And like segregation and it's absolutely like that. I mean, it's a very different topic. You know, you can't compare queer rights to um, racial issues. They're just on completely different uh, fields. You know, like you can't compare the two other than the fact that the people who want to halt progress don't only want to halt it, but they want to take it back because they are scared of losing power. And that's all it is. It's just, you know, it's it's people who have been in charge all this time afraid that they're not going to be in charge anymore because we don't want to let them be in charge anymore so you are either for progress or you're against it because at this point you know we can either take a step forward or we'll <laughs> i don't know we'll end in utter ruin <laughs> because i'm at this point where i'm not gonna as long as i'm alive and as long as i have any kind of influence um, I'm not going to let people make us take a step backward. I won't be forced back into the closet. I won't be forced back into um, portraying a gender role that isn't my truth. You know, I'm not going to let that happen to me or to anyone on my watch. So, you know, it could come down to an all out war between those who are for progress and ho those who are against it. But. Yeah. Um, I forget the original question. I went off on a tangent. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I just think that for a long time in the media, you know, only one certain part of the population was represented, and the, the second, you know, even if we just take Marvel films for example, the, the second there was Black Panther or Captain Marvel when we're not getting the exact same character every single time in every single program or film a large part of the internet and society just gets really angry at that because they're like well i can't see me in this character mm -hmm. it's like that's true but think of all these other people that now can and that's important because they exist whether or not you represent them or not yeah i mean it's just with how much media we have and with how many different television programs and and movies that are being made constantly there's just no excuse not to have everyone represented and you know it used to be it was it was a it was a huge thing just to have like a queer person or a trans person represented on television but it started out with them just being archetypes you know maybe and and i'm i'm finding that i'm still frustrated with the way that drag queens are represented basically anywhere but drag race yeah. you know a drag has been kind of this in vogue revolution and everyone wants a drag queen on their program now everyone wants to include drag but they're not yet at a place where they're letting us be fully fleshed out multi-dimensional multi-faceted characters you a lot of times you just see drag represented in mainstream media as um you know a sassy drag queen says two lines and then she's done and or drag queens get used as like set dressing we're in the background so that they can say we're being represented but we're not actually being represented as people we're being represented as ar archetypes yeah. but you've seen that throughout you know throughout our history um when gay people are first introduced into mainstream media they're always just a a one-line character and they're always boiled down to an archetype and we have to continue to fight and continue to um, insist on representation until now we have plenty of tele television programs where queer people are being represented in like a true-to-life way um, that doesn't mean that the archetypes don't still get <laughs> worked in here and there, but, um, you know, I think it's just about fighting. You know, we can't sit idly, um, when we know there are things we want to change and, but it means we have to fight for everyone, you know, like, <laughs> because it only happens when everyone gets on board. So we have to, if we want representation for ourselves, we have to also be fighting for representation for other people and demographics that we don't belong to because, you know, we have to say as a society that we want to move in this direction. And, of course, we're going to have to fight for it, but 
it won't happen if we don't do anything. <laughs> it'll get there. It'll be okay. It's all yeah. going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. By the by, the time this video is out, it could all be okay. Hopefully, I mean, I I was doing an interview the other day, and it's a, it's kind of a morose way to look at it. But this um this interviewer was asking like, so what do you think we can do about the older generation that seems to have a harder time accepting progress and moving towards progress when it seems like the younger generation is on board, it's the older generation that's like holding on to this idea of what the world should be. Yeah. And I said, at a certain point, if you're still ignorant to these issues and if you're still choosing to not acknowledge the rights and freedoms that should be afforded to every human being, then you're choosing ignorance. You're willfully ignorant. You're not ignorant because you were raised ignorant. At this point with, with the internet and social media and all the ways in which you can be educated on these topics, the only way to remain ignorant is if you choose to be ignorant, you know? I mean, I'm talking about people in privileged situations. I, I don't want to speak on behalf of, you know, demographics that I'm not as familiar with, you know, like um, lower income demographics that might not have the same access to resources. But if you are um, a privileged person who chooses to be ignorant, you're only ignorant because you're choosing to be ignorant. And um, I think... Uh, <laughs> I think basically we just got to wait for those people to die <laughs> and then, then we take over because just like, wait out. like if you're if you're in your 60s or 70s or 80s and you're choosing to be ignorant to progress then I guess we're gonna just kind of wait you out and wait until you're gone and then the next generation will have our chance to I mean that's why progress sometimes takes time because you have to wait for you got to get out with the old and in with the new sometimes. And I'm sure the next generation is going to be saying the same thing about my generation because there's probably going to be new things that um, my generation is going to have trouble getting on board with. But that's why progress is an ebb and flow. I think just every every generation we take a bigger step forward and a bigger step forward. So hopefully soon we'll just have a process in place, like a formula that we use to like integrate progress <laughs> so that we could cut out the middleman and not have to wait for people to die for, for change to be made. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Hopefully we keep taking steps forwards even if it is uphill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gus from the US. Um, Trans Visibility Day is uh, a great day to reflect and celebrate how far we've come towards uh, accepting gender variant identities. Uh, but it's also a day to uh, recognize and remember that there are still um, many people for whom coming out as trans is not safe and is not an option. Um, so if you're an ally, do your part. Speak out often if you hear instances of transphobia. Um, speak to your friends and family members and try to get them to um, be more open and accepting. And if you are a trans person, uh, find your community. Go online if you live in the middle of nowhere. We're out here. Bye. Hi, uh, my name is Rain. I'm a 21-year-old student. I am uh, French originally, lived there most of my life, but um, I am now a UK resident. And visibility is extremely important as it is a way for us to know that we're not alone. Um, being trans is often something that we know that we are, but we don't really know how to express. And meeting or seeing people who are like, are like us gives us hope. Hello, I'm Orla and I live in the UK. So, what does trans visibility mean to me? Well, it means being out there and being positive. So you're not hiding away at home. You're out in the streets, you're visual, you're visible and you're doing your thing. It means that I can go about my life the way I want to and that I can do the things I want to, and I'm valid. Hi, I'm Mabs, I'm from the UK. Visibility to me means being able to be open about who you are and express yourself 
without the fear of judgment. Thank you everybody for watching at home. Be sure to share, subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up and leave lots of lovely comments. And I'll see you all again soon for another episode of The Sarah O'Connell Show. Bye. <laughs>